I'm running for president to defeat the Washington machine. And to do that, we have to drive a stake through the heart of the IRS and our terrible tax code. We need to tear it up and start over with a plan that's simple, fair, and cuts taxes for every single American. The only way to save Americans from being taxed out of existence is to institute the flat tax. How many times have you heard that one? Regardless of income level, there is one level of tax for all. Plus side, it's simple. No double taxation, removes plenty of loopholes, and doesn't discriminate based on what you make. Downside, lower income folks are hosed, less money after taxes are paid. It actually benefits those who make more, and the government would have even less money to waste on pork. Though that last one might not be such a bad thing after all. Heading for the 2016 election and political promises galore on taxes, here comes some reality doled out by a man who wouldn't mind being your president. Also happens to be a former commissioner of the Internal Revenue Service. Mark Everson is on Midpoint. Mark, thanks so much for joining us. Ed, happy to be with you. Mark, what do you think when you hear Rand Paul say, we've got to drive a stake through the heart of the IRS? That used to be your job. <laughs> I'm glad he wasn't aimed at me personally. <laughs> uh, no, here's the thing, Ed. Um, we need to have real conversations about the tax code, the policy, tax policy. The problem about the IRS is that with the political targeting and the problems we've had, the, the arm of government which funds our Navy, which funds the Social Security, has now become viewed as a bad actor beyond, oh, sort of the, sort of the normal disgruntlement of having to pay your taxes. That's not good. So uh, let me say first, the IRS does need to restore its credibility. That's essential. It's been very damaging. The conduct that took place was wrong. And then all of these problems about producing emails have done nothing but sort of undercut the agency's um, respect in, in, in the public at large. So that has got to change. But that has little to do, I would suggest to you, with the normal political football of tax policy. Then let's talk about that change, if you will, then, because everybody here mentions the flat tax. Rand Paul says it has to work, but you have an alternative. How would that differ? Yes. Um, first of all, let me say the principles, Ed. I think it's very important at this juncture that whatever we do, and we, it, Rand Paul is right. We need to reform the code. He's, he's dead right about that. But, but whatever we do, we need to do two things, in my opinion. First, we need to bring in the same amount of money that we have coming in now. We can't afford to have some dramatic tax cut. And that's because we have these voracious spending needs right now. I've advocated, I've got a six-point plan that, that your viewers can find at markforamerica.com. One point is about taxes. That's the first point. But the fourth point is about controlling spending. These two issues go together. And the increasing spend on the entitlement programs is going to bankrupt us. So uh, he says, even though his revenues fall short by $2 trillion, that he's going to make it up with spending cuts. Well, we're going to have to make drastic adjustments on the spend side just so that the deficits don't increase further. So it's not really realistic to Mark, put in a cut right now. If That's I might ask then, because you're talking down a line that I've gone down before with so many people, yes, we need the same money. But there is so much, there's a ridiculous amount of government waste right now. If we yes. took all the money that is being wasted in pork projects and congressmen and lawmakers who just want to jam it in there and stick it to the American public, wouldn't that help make up some of the deficit here and get us back on track? It would help make up some of the difference, but the, the biggest problem is really just the growth in the entitlement spending in terms of the people who are in their 60s now and are going to start to really draw on very heavy benefits in the Social Security and the Medicare system. So we've got to come to grips with that, even if you make the changes, which you're right about, Ed, need to be made in terms of normal government operations. We need to do both. And, and I advocate a serious uh, approach to that. Look, Reagan and O'Neill did this back in the 80s. They phased in changes on Social Security. We need to do the same thing, if you will. Now, I suggest that you put back to taxes. I don't want to increase taxes for anybody. That's the other piece of this. We have a system that's progressive. The income tax started out a century ago really only applying to the very high end. Mm -hmm. And then it was broadened during World War II to apply to the masses, if you will. I suggest going with a hybrid program developed by Michael Gratz. He's a former Bush 41 Treasury official, respected academic. It's been vetted to show that it it, it uh, by a nonpartisan group to show that the numbers are real, they add up, and what the approach would do is 
you would put in a consumption tax. If you do that, Ed, you can take 150 million Americans off the income tax rolls. And this gets back, so they won't be worrying about the big bad IRS, if you will. They just are out of that. Well, let me do this, Mark, if you will. I've only got about a minute left, and yes. I just want to make sure, because we'll do this again. We'll continue to discuss this with you, because it's still a fascinating topic we've all got to get involved in. Yes. But with regard to this flat tax, there are those who say it's a great idea, but its time has passed, and flatter is not fairer. How do you answer that? That's what I'm getting at, because my proposal leaves the income tax in for the higher end. I think we've been well served by progressivity in the code. I don't want to raise taxes on the high end people, but I think that the relative burden they're paying now is about right. All right. Now, let me just ask this real quick. Did you try to ever do anything like this as you were commissioner of the IRS? And were you blunted in any chance you had to really make substantive change? Well, for legitimate reasons, Ed, the IRS commissioner doesn't talk about tax policy, but that's because if you advocated one approach and then it didn't go through, people would say, well, what do you expect? He wanted to do something different. So what you do, and this is one of the cornerstones of my campaign for the presidency, I say I will execute the laws as written, not as I might wish them to be. It's essential that somebody run the IRS or some of these other big government agencies, they're taking the law as written. Let the Congress figure out what the, what the law ought to be, working, of course, with the president. Do it as the law is written. What a concept. Wow, I don't know if we can actually <laughs> get there in this country. Mark, I want to thank you for taking some time to join us. Again, as I pointed out, we are going to have you on again and talk about this because, believe me, everybody wants to know where their taxes are going to be, and we'll talk more about 2016. Mark Everson, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, sir. All right, take care. From the man who was once in complete control of your taxes to the man in complete control of the expert opinion, from the Society to Advance Financial Education, let's dig in with Steve Beeman. All right, Steve, you and I got two minutes to spend together here. What did you hear? What do you like? What don't you like? I heard a lot of political speak, and it kind of gets <laughs> where the rubber doesn't meet the road. The reality is the flat tax is an elegant idea in many ways. One of the challenges of the tax code is to build an economy, and one of the biggest throwbacks to the economy that really harms it is uncertainty. If, indeed, we had a stable tax rate, you'd see business investment grow and you'd see consumer spending increase. So the notion of a stable flat tax actually is economically smart. When we talk about progressivity, by the way, that is purely a political football that sets one group against another. We have the top 1% in this country. What's the number? I think they pay 22% of all federal income taxes. The other issues that you've got is, does these flat taxes eliminate employment taxes? Because if they do, that's a huge benefit to the lower income people. And it eliminates this notion that the flat tax is regressive. So throw that out right, you know, right off the face. I, I do think that we need to look at the rate. We're looking right now at a federal budget that it's about 17% of the budget is what comes in in taxes. So to go to a 14% rate probably doesn't work right off. We'd probably have to go a little higher. But net net, it would give a predictability. And this idea of the fair tax or the consumption tax scares the living Jesus out of me because it's a hidden tax. <laughs> and I got that's about, something politicians love. I got about 30 seconds left. And would you say that Rand Paul's then idea of flat tax and others, it really is just there for political to draw people in, get them excited. And it's nothing more than just a promise that they can't keep. I think it's a genuine hope that Rand Paul holds. I think he really believes in it, but it, whether it politically could ever happen is a different story. You're talking about putting lots of accountants out of business. You're talking about shrinking the bureaucracy of the IRS, and that stuff just doesn't happen. Again, Reagan said the only thing next to permanent is a government program, and that would be true of the IRS. Shrink the bureaucracy. My God, man, we have to stop right now. This could stop the world as we know it. Although we try to do that all the time here, it's fair to say. Steve Beeman, always a pleasure to get some straight talk here, my friend. And the rubber does meet the road right here economically. Talk to you soon. Take care. Have a good day, Ed. All right, coming up next, Rafi talks about why you should not use corporal punishment against your kids. Let's talk about it on Midpoint.